Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Probably gonna be a lengthier one as well. So as always, all today's stories are time marked and stamped down below. Let's hop into our first story though. But very, very briefly, I wanna tell you guys as well, if you guys did watch yesterday's episode and you're here for the rumors or the uh, the alleged speculation around a certain character out there in the CSGO scene, I will share that information with all of you guys. The appropriate information to actually be shared in the back half of today's episode. I'm only gonna tell you guys what is probably deemed appropriate to share. I'm gonna leave the rest for that to the team and the player himself to actually come out and say, um, from what I've heard so far, it's just a really sad story. So we'll talk about that in the back half of the episode. First off though as well, we're going to talk about the whole entire Doc situation. For those of you guys who are not aware of the Doc situation, currently a 17 year old and a former Face It Pro League member. As of right now, he's been put on a temporary hold from playing in FPL because he does not use his microphone in game. Now while this is actually uh, causing a lot of traction out there and of course calling a lot of heads to actually turn its way, it's because it's a very unique situation, but a situation we have seen a lot in the past in terms of random pros upcoming and also having some very skeptical clips out there of them. So not only does Doc not use his microphone in game, he has one of his friends actually speak and make the callouts in game for him, which is a pretty awkward situation to give you guys a little, uh, I guess, a little experience of that. Here's a quick clip of his friend making the calls in game for him, which of course can cause some big issues or some slight issues with the delay. But here's a little experience about that. Yeah, Hello? I'm pushing me. Yeah, yeah. Buddy. Okay. Uh, T spawn, I mean. They tried to Maybe jump window, window or. Yeah, yeah. or Maybe they failed. I don't know. Left side. Mod off now. It can, yeah. be co it can be underground to connect, I guess. I'm pushing mid, I think they're towards there. At least two guys. Don't see anything else. Yeah, they're stuck at least one guy. Oh. Yeah. Holding out. Yeah, I'm making a push for this. Okay, I'm going in. Yeah. One out. I'm not Wait, I have them. Cook and drop. Yeah. I pick mid. You want flash? And on top of that, there are quite a few clips out there of him potentially cheating, some very, very skeptical looking clips. And there are definitely two sides to this story. So I will also be referencing, of course, Thorne and Richard Lewis. Their recent return by the numbers episode number 38 will be linked down below where these two go after Doc. And I do want to preface by saying there are definitely two sides to the Doc argument. And I agree with both a big, both major arguments on both sides. A very hard argument to actually take a side on because there is, of course, the Richard Lewis, Thorne, and, and a lot of the community members side where they're kind of attacking Doc because, first of all, he's a player not using his microphone. It's a bit socially awkward, and I guess you could say it was kind of a unique circumstance. And there's a lot of a background in the story. We do not really know if it's actually the truth. The current story out there is Doc is 17 years old. He lives at home with both of his parents. His mom works away during the day, but his dad stays at home and works from home. And that's why he cannot use his microphone because his parents are very anti-gaming, although they still let him play CSGO, you know, eight to 12 hours a day, which is, which is pretty crazy. The only restriction they apparently have is him turning off his microphone. So there's that side of the story as well as his his apparent cheating accusations out there which have not been proven either guilty or innocent so there's always that hanging in the air and of course that's the one side there's also the other side though all of us out there defending the guy because we do feel bad for him and I do want to say Richard Lewis and Thorne made some great points if it was Flush or if it was any other you know top known player like Sabroza we were accusing them of these things and we saw these clips we would definitely be accusing them much harsher than we are for Doc a lot of people out there feeling bad for the guy I'm definitely probably one of those people leaning towards that side of the argument I do feel bad for him he was definitely targeted when he first joined FPL. There was actually a lot of racist remarks out there. And so that's where my bias actually does lie. But there's definitely two solid arguments to the story. Comment down below which story or which side of the argument you guys agree with. I, I definitely agree with both sides here. There's definitely some sketchiness of the story. Do that, does it all line up? Does it all make sense? And can it be put together? And actually, is it all being? To, are we all being told the truth? Are there some lies behind this? Most likely. Do you guys feel bad for Doc? Are you defending him? Do you hope that one day he actually makes it back to FPL? That's the big story in question. So I have been talking to Doc, and I do want to clarify a few things before I move on to our next story. Of course, there's a lot of Ross Change news out there and stories besides this big one. I did talk to, uh, to Doc back and forth on Twitter to kind of elaborate some things, which I talked to all of you guys about in the past as well. First of all, he does not currently use his microphone, but he does plan to in the future. He's currently 17 years old. He turns 18 on September 4th, and apparently he's also claimed in September, once he turns 18, he'll be allowed to move out on his own to his own apartment, and that's where he'll actually turn his microphone on for the first time. He'll be streaming. He'll be playing FPL according to himself. So we're going to see if that actually works out. And if it does, I hope for the best for him. On top of that as well, we do have some accusations by Richard Lewis and other people out there, which does seem to have a little evidence, but of course not 100% evidence, which I was a bit appalled by Richard Lewis actually sharing this kind of stuff. I reached out to Richard Lewis a day and a half ago on Twitter. He seems pretty active on other sources of Twitter, but he did not reply to me with a response. I asked if he actually had proof that 
Doc was using VacBand accounts, he did not respond to that accusation. So Richard Lewis kind of threw out in his video that apparently Doc has played on three accounts, two of which actually had VacBands on their records. Now, I reached out to Doc to clarify, and he did actually say he actually has played on an account with an Overwatch ban in his history, but none of the accounts he has ever played on has actually had a VAC ban in their history. Just to clarify that, Richard Lewis also stated on, on top of that in his video, which will be linked down below again, and he still made some great points. I'm not trying to target the guy whatsoever, but he also made the point that a friend of Doc was actually giving these accounts was a cheat coder. Now, Doc clarified as well, his friend was not a cheat coder, but he did in fact have a cheating past. So, just to clarify that, and again, we're going to have more touches and uh, more on this in, in the future as well. Doc's going to communicate back with us on Twitter, guys, with his side of the story. So, as of right now, there is no 100% legit evidence against Doc that he has been cheating in the past or actually played on VAC band accounts. Although, I do have to agree, there are a lot of sketchy arguments out there against him apparently being a cheater. But I guess you could say the argument innocent until proven guilty, although there's a lot of people out there that have not been proven guilty, which we assume still have cheated. You know, Flusha, Sabroza, other ones being on top of that list, which we definitely target as being that kind of that dirty player, especially Sabroza got the blunt of it. So why do we cheat? Why do we treat Doc differently was a great argument that Thorne did make. So that's going to be it for now, guys. I'll clarify more in the future on the Doc situation when we do find out more information. What do you guys think below? Which side are you guys on? Do you accuse Doc? Do you defend Doc? What do you guys think? Well, let's move on to some other stories, Jake. This video is way too long. But also in very cool news, we actually had announced just yesterday, guys, the CSGO Player Association. I'm not going to try and memorize the, the actual enunciation of that or the uh, the shortened version. I think it's like CPPC. It's, it's, it's something like that, but it's actually a really good thing. If you guys know the last year and a half, we've had a lot of player contracts come up out of nowhere. Most recently, the Indian contracts for one of the Asian championships or Asian games where they require players to do ridiculous things. Players were actually forced to out of their own pocket to, you know, go to whatever requirements the tournament was hosting. But we've had other teams out there, of course, find out about uh, you know these contracts out of nowhere. I think the most recent one besides that was we think of Smuya, his Epsilon contract. He had no idea while he was on the bench of Epsilon, he'd only be making 600 bucks a month or whatever it was ridiculously. Obviously, they fixed that issue, they resolved that, but it should never have been a problem in the first place. So the CP, uh, CP the Player Association, in, in short, is generally actually supposed to help these players out there. So pretty much experienced players, there's going to be over 90 members, seven on the board. Those players on screen for all of you will be on the board right now. There's going to be a revote as well as to whether those guys will stay on the board and be at the top of the association and there can always be other players joined as well but the overall goal of the organization is to help newcoming players with their contracts and to be treated fairly in their organizations so overall thumbs up going to be a great organization hopefully in the future to help out upcoming players and again going to be a great thing to see in the expansion of CSGO as we still have these younger players flooding the pro scene that they don't get ripped off by these contracts and although the wording on the Woxic tweet was very confusing here is his tweet on screen for all of you I wasn't really sure if he got the visa and all of a sudden he wasn't going to go and, and kind of make a protest I reached out to him for comment, guys. No comment yet, but it does seem Woxic will be joining HR, luckily enough, right in time for the CIS minor, and they are going to be heavy favorites there no matter what. Um, so he will be there, apparently, for the minor to play with them. Uh, those teams actually have the CIS minor on screen for all of you, and they will be by far. Like I said before, HR, definitely one of your favorite teams there to make it through, alongside a team like Team Spirit, who's doing very well, but still a very competitive pool there. It's going to be cool to see who goes through to the actual major qualifier. Now, on top of that as well, we also have our European closed qualifiers for the minor going on. So one step behind the CIS minor right now and those 16 teams as of right now your top eight on screen and very very surprising as well We had 3d max. They are now two wins away guys after beating NIP in a best of three a big upset there It's a 2-0 sweep by them over NIP But still if you guys watch the matchups It was a very very close match NIP definitely had a chance on both those first maps to come back And if it did go to map three, which I believe was trained They were definitely favorite in this series But 3d max is now two wins away from making the minor and having a chance even closer to getting a sticker So again like I said before, guys, 3D Max, NIP, if either one of those teams actually make the major qualifier, I will do a double knife giveaway. So that's why I'm very excited for that. And again, I would love to see NIP stickers, 3D Max stickers back again, because we have not seen them in a long time. NIP almost two years and 3D Max, I think four years now. So pretty crazy to see the CIS minor, European minor, North American minor qualifiers all going on right now. It's crazy to see what teams are going to be the upset teams and we'll see who exactly those are. Now, very lastly as well, before I get into rumors out there about some certain players, I do want to talk about a Apparently, we actually had Chris J go on stream and say some very, very cool stuff about the future of Cloud9 as, as well as Mouse Sports. Of course, Mouse Sports' most recent pickup being Snacks. Apparently, nothing was actually considered to be one of their full-time members. He was considered to actually be having an offer. Now, the exact context of the question, we're not really sure if nothing considered them because they considered nothing, but we're not sure if nothing considered actually joining them and going back to being a full-time pro. Now, why that would be most important right now because, uh, again, if Mouse Sports was considering them as an op him as an option, it doesn't mean that he actually wanted to go back 
back to playing full time for them. But if he did want to go back to playing full time, there is no other team right now. I'd love to see an argument in the chat down below. There is no other team right now in North America who needs an IGL or that kind of role more than I would say Cloud9. And what a better fit for nothing than his former alma mater team, Cloud9. So apparently right now, rumors out there. Uh, Snacks, of course, filling his spot on Mouse Sports. Uh, Cloud9 still needing a member, and Tark continues to hint at Cloud9 needing a fifth member. Now, we're not sure who that fifth member will be exactly, but Mixwell made sure to state as well on his Twitter he could be that fifth member for Cloud9 if need be, but he also made sure to clarify to all of us he does not want to go back to playing on a North American team. And what a big slap in the face. First of all, I love the guy to death. He's an amazing player, a genuine player, one of the few players out there where I think a large majority of us love the guy he just seems so so kind-hearted but just just to think about the, what he said there he does not want to go back to North America he's not ready for that kind of play it just goes to show you that European teams are definitely the dominant I guess you could say definitely the dominant teams out there but in what terms why would he not want to return does he not see a future in North America but it's very cool to see he will be for Cloud9 if they need him but as of right now Cloud9 is not solidified who their fifth member will be it could be mixed well as well as Tarek like I said before alone so only a few weeks away guys and we'll have our newest Cloud9 member stand in probably be an out sometime soon. And very lastly, guys, I don't really know. I, I'm trying to evaluate because over the past few years, I've been trying to, of course, improve on the show. And I think as of as of lately, I've actually done quite well in terms of knowing the news and that kind of stuff. I'm finally comfortable on camera talking about CSGO stuff, but I'm still learning. As you guys watch these videos, I'm definitely learning. And hopefully you guys are learning a bit as well about what I can actually share with you guys on the channel. Now, what I'm talking about is Olaf Meister, the recent rumors around him. I had him in the thumbnail, hopefully not in the title, unless I, I just got really stupid. He should not be in the title of about this because I'm sure you guys are well aware about a month ago he left that FaZe Clan roster he has yet to be back apparently according to rumors if you guys check his Steam profile he has not played any games for the last 30 days I'm not going to give you guys full details but apparently it is a pretty deep family issue I'm going to wait for FaZe Clan or Olaf Meister himself to make comment about that but even more so on that something I can actually talk about it as well rumors out there do state besides his family issue which is going to be a, a, you guys can wait for that that news to come out in itself apparently though Olaf Meister did have very serious eye issues towards the end of his stint. Rumors out there say he was actually going through some very serious eye issues. Um, his eye not being able to focus on his eye as well as not being able to see sometimes. Um, so again, I'm not really sure the full details about, about either one of those stories, if they are necessarily true, but I thought I would share them with all of you guys as to why he will not be returning anytime soon. Um, so if this is actually inappropriate by you guys, I, I do apologize. Maybe I maybe I shouldn't have shared it whatsoever, but it does seem he's going through some personal issues and it will be some time before he actually comes back to the FaZe Clan roster. As always, I hope you guys all enjoy it. I will probably not see all of you until Sunday or Monday with a recap episode, but I hope you guys all enjoy your weekends. Have a great one, guys. Feel free to leave a comment down below. I did reply to a lot of comments yesterday, so thank you guys all for leaving almost 200 comments. You guys are awesome, but I will see you all sometime Sunday or Monday with a CSGO News Weekend recap. Hope you guys all have a great weekend. My name is Jake like you, and big things are coming soon. I promise you. They're, they're soon. They're a little bit delayed, but they're coming soon. Thank you all for watching, guys. My name is Jake Malak.